the Ukraine-Russian war, the first war where it was openly known and stated that cyber attacks were going to be the first salvo. It wasn't a bullet, it wasn't a missile. Cyber attacks. Because you can take down a nation with cyber because you can shut down financial and banking, you can shut down healthcare, you can shut down energy, you can shut down military systems, you can shut down GPS and satellites. You have a lot of things that you can do. This is why we all have to together start moving a little bit more quickly on this. And now that quantum computers are here, due to the way they operate, due to their subatomic properties and how they can be programmed, they are going to take this encryption down. Anyway, let's talk about the practical applications of what we're doing here. Um, you know, the cryptography itself is great. However, how do you get that moving out to the enterprise? It's open source code. So how many of you are familiar with Linux? Anybody use Linux out there? Raise your hand if you've ever heard of it, used it. Yeah, there's some hands out there. So Linux is open source. But it was difficult to move into the enterprise, and it took a lot of work for people to use Linux, so there was a group called Red Hat that came around. And Red Hat said, you know what we'll do? We'll take Linux, we'll put it in an ice box, we'll give you an interface, we'll give you some policy management, we'll give you some orchestration, and now you can use Linux in your enterprise very easily. So this is what QSecure is working on. Let's move into some of the detail here. So first, let's talk about the threat. So right now, there are nation states investing tens of billions of dollars into quantum computers that will be weaponized. And I say that not lightly because quantum computers, like other technologies, and now we're seeing just like AI, have the capability to help humanity, help all of us live better lives, help save the planet, help do a lot of great things. However, like all great technologies, sometimes the bad guys are going to use them against us. And so whether it is AI or quantum computing, we expect that these are going to be used and they'll create problems for us. I don't know how many of you noticed, but in the AI world, we have ChatGPT. It took three months after ChatGPT was announced to have WormGPT. What's WormGPT? It's a hacker's version of ChatGPT, and it's available on the dark web, and you can go use it to hack. So you see what I'm saying? It won't take long. So since quantum computers are so powerful, and since they can break encryption, um, we need to deploy the algorithms that Damien and the likes have built as quickly as possible. Now some say, well, who cares? Quantum computers takes a lot of power in qubits to break those. We've got time, right? Could take years, years a long time. Well, the answer is no. Now, why is that? Because today, with a little bit of technology, anyone can listen in on signals. For instance, from satellites. With about $500 of hardware you can buy anywhere, go on YouTube, you'll see videos of this, you can take in satellite signals. Now, you can store those signals. Now, fortunately, most of those are encrypted, which is a good thing. However, you can still store them. Now, if you take that and you also look at listening devices that might be around the world, you look at listening devices at the ends of fiber in nation states, they are gathering data, right? And these nation states are going to decrypt that data with a quantum computer. Now, let's talk about why it's important now. Well, if that data needs 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 years of protection, think of government secrets. Think of healthcare data. There's a lot of young people in this room. Guess what? Your healthcare data needs to be protected for your entire life. Um, banking information, minimum 25 years of protection, right? But if we have a quantum computer that's powerful enough in five or seven years, but your data needs to be protected for 30 years, you can see the problem. Your data or government data, you know, things like nuclear secrets, military secrets, um, you know, any, any data that has value beyond 10, 15, 20 years means that adversaries or people that have the capability to decrypt what they stole 10 years ago, now they've got access to that data and they can use it against you. This is the real problem that we're facing today. That's why this is a now problem. This is not something you can wait on. 
Um, I don't know if many of you noticed, but in the United States, there was a big hack just two days ago on one of the major casino brands, MGM. So MGM has 13 properties. If any of you have been to Las Vegas, you may have seen or been to the MGM hotel. There's 13 major properties. Um, the hackers shut down everything. So all of the casino floor was shut down, no slot machines. Um, all of the ATMs were shut down. There was no money movement. And they locked everybody out of their rooms. So the room keys didn't work because we're all relying on more and more electronics every day, right? Everybody in this room is now tied to these things and you're using electronics everywhere. So when MGM got shut down for a couple days, of course, that hit their stock price. Their stock price went down six or 7% and it ends up, we just found out a few hours ago, they paid ransomware, paid $15 million to get back online. Well, that's, those things don't stop. We're gonna see much more of that and the thing is, if you think about the internet, you know, when we started the internet, which was a long time ago, it wasn't built for security. Security was an afterthought. Internet was communications, right? So we could have this great communications network. And then they said, oh yeah, we got that thing called e-commerce. Oh, we better protect that stuff. Let's put, let's put a little security on there. The security schemes that we've been using were invented in the 1970s, 50 years old. Those are the basis of the schemes. Now, we've increased key sizes. So we've made it a little bit bigger and harder, but the structure is the same. So what NIST is working on and what Dustin talked about, what Damien's working on and it has actually built, is a new form of encryption to move us to the next level. AI is creating all sorts of new attack vectors. We're not gonna survive on 1970s encryption when you combine quantum and AI. It's just not gonna work. Encryption has to become, and cryptography has to become at the forefront now because people will, again, use these things in a negative way and we're gonna see a lot of problems starting to happen. So again, timeline is fast. Now, Justin alluded to this, but I'll highlight. In the United States, in December, we passed a law that our entire federal government has to upgrade to post-quantum cybersecurity over a period of time, starting with assessments. Now this law was passed because our intelligence communities, our Department of Defense and, and the leaders understand the threat. So this threat is, we call it existential. This threat is a, a global threat which will change the balance of power. If somebody comes online with a quantum computer and wants to do bad things and if other nation states like the United States or South Korea, have not protected themselves with post-quantum cyber, we don't know what the results are going to be. You think about banking and finance. Well, we did a study with the Hudson Institute uh, in the US and found that one single quantum attack, and by the way, this was an Oxford model. This was 13,000 data points. This was the most robust study on a quantum attack. One single quantum attack, on Fedwire, which is our federal banking system, would cause $2 trillion in damage. That's one attack. One or two of those attacks in the United States is done. You shut down financial systems. Energy grids, we had a hack on our colonial pipeline about a year ago. Energy on the East Coast was shut down for a week. Chaos. We felt like that was a probe. We were being probed. How resilient are we? How quickly could we get back online? The Ukraine-Russian war. The first war where it was open, openly known and stated that cyber attacks were going to be the first salvo. It wasn't a bullet, it wasn't a missile. Cyber attacks, because you can, you can take down a nation with cyber, uh, because you can shut down financial and banking, you can shut down healthcare, you can shut down um, energy, uh, you can shut down military systems, you can shut down GPS uh, and satellites. You have a lot of things that you can do. This is why we all have to together start moving a little bit more quickly on this. And now that quantum computers are here, due to the way they operate, due to their subatomic properties and how they can be programmed, they are going to take this encryption down. So a quick theoretical physics degree for all of you guys, so you'll all get a certificate here in theoretical physics. No, I can't back that up, but anyway. Theoretical physics says that superposition allows you to have uh, a qubit or quantum bit in any position. This is what gives quantum computers their power. 
you take enough of those qubits and you entangle them, tie them together, you run a process, that process is exponential in nature. So if you add one qubit, which is one processor, doubles the power. So for instance, if I have 50 servers, regular servers, let's say standard servers like we have today, if I add one more chip and one more server, I have 51. But in quantum, you add one more qubit, you don't have 51, you have double 50. And then if you add another one to 52, you don't have 52, you have double the 51. So this is why the increase in power is there. To give you one other analogy, 300 qubits, which is two to the 300th mathematically, that number is larger than there are atoms in the entire universe. So you think about that. one quantum computer with 300 qubits is a number larger than there are atoms in the whole universe. That's one computer. That's not even 1,000 qubits or 4,100 qubits that would crack Shor's algorithm. So this is the power we're dealing with. And while, again, this is awesome for humanity, it's going to be used elsewhere. So let's get on. So you guys have a master plan right here in South Korea. I don't know how many of you knew this, but by 2035, that's your plan right there. You guys have to upgrade to post-quantum cyber as well. So this is all the right moves. And by the way, post-quantum cyber is more resilient against standard encryption anyway. So you're, everybody is going to be better off this way. So we, we suggest that everybody start exploring and assessing right now.